Hello, my name is John Coleman. I'm here at Legacy Gallery with my good buddy Eric Peterson. I want to do a little walkthrough. I've got 20 brand new pieces here. Uh, one's not quite here yet, but uh, I'll have it here tomorrow. But it will start with the big one over here. This is He Who Jumps Over Everyone. This was based on a sculpture or an image that George Catlin had painted. We've got, a, we've got the, the original image over here on the back, our original facsimile of it over here in the back. Um, this was about 18, in the early 1830s. Uh, Crow Chief, uh, very flamboyant. Uh, Catlin was very impressed with uh, his ability to uh, ride this horse and his connection to the horse. Uh, he felt that the horse and, and the rider had a special bond to where the rider actually created a war bonnet for the horse. And I've, I've, never, I've never seen that before, and I always wanted to, to do this piece, partly because of that reason. Uh, let's, uh, go to, let's go to my drawing. This is, a, this is called the Oracle. Uh, the Oracle is just another word for medicine man, uh, another uh, influence of George Catlin. Uh, just for the name, he, he uh, used the word oracle on a couple of his Medicine Man paintings, and I thought, that's, that sounds really nice, I like that. This, this image is of a fellow who uh, modeled for me a couple years back, a uh, uh, really cool dude, and really had a great uh, 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 way of uh, holding himself. Uh, I always wanted to do a large drawing. Uh, this is drawings five and a half feet tall. That's a beauty. My, yeah, oh yeah, and uh, you said this is the one piece you'd like to keep, right? Yeah, I was just yeah, I was just telling Eric <laughs> earlier. We were just talking about that, and I thought, God, if there was a piece that didn't sell, it'd be nice if this one it didn't. But I think we're going to be do okay on it. <laughs> uh, this is one of my favorites. Uh, this was based on a trip that Eric and I took uh, to uh, Montana. This is up on Crow Agency. Uh, our friend uh, uh, Michael Badhand set up uh, a, like an Indian camp for us, and hired some uh, reenactors, uh, Sioux people. Uh, I was very fortunate to meet this uh, young gal. And she had her baby, and we had a nice, we had a cradle board for her. Uh, and the part that I love about the setup for this painting is, is that she's in this in environment, almost like a cocoon, uh, where she's just nestled in. The other part of it is, is that the cultural aspect of a baby being born into this, this with his surrounded by by his ancestors, the exploits of his of these great warriors, and this is kind of is sort of a uh, preview of his future. And the title of the the painting is his uh, mother's blessing. And she's just reaching down, just getting ready to touch him and and kind of get him set up for the rest of his life, I guess. That um, one's become one of my favorites too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, Eric. Yeah, yeah. I, I, br I brought some mannequins down and dressed them up with some of my uh, my outfits. Uh, this is based on the uh, bear cult uh, leader, uh, which the painting is over here. Let's talk about that for a second. Again, my friend Michael uh, Badhand uh, made the outfit for me. He's a really not only is he a great craftsman, he's really uh, a, a well-respected historian. So. It's important to have, you know, I know a lot about history, but it's important to be surrounded by people like that who, who really can place things in, the, in where they, they need to be. And uh, what we have here is a guy, 1830, uh, and he would have been uh, a Lakota bear cult leader. My next painting over here um, is uh, Daughter of the Plains. Uh, the fact that I got two daughters and I got granddaughters, uh, I usually have a tendency to think of daughters as the center of things. Uh, that's a spiritual center for me. And the nature of this particular painting has that spiritual quality to it. And it was easy to think in terms of, of her being uh, representing the, the, the Plains people as, as a central figure. Another one of my favorites. Smallest sculpture in the in the show, uh, my little Hopi girl. I've done a couple of these through the years. A lot of people understand, know the story about the the squash blossoms. This is a this is a hairdo that's that the young maidens use, uh, and it signifies that they're they're ready to be married. Once they're married, the squash blossoms come down. Love that hairdo. Yeah, yeah, uh, Princess Leia. You know, this is Star <laughs> Wars. Go. Star Wars. But it looks like flowers coming yeah, out yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. It's a beautiful design, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know, let's walk over here. Now, do they get the credit for that design or do you? I think that goes to the Hopi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I, 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 you gotta, yeah, I'm not, I, I can't take credit for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, this little girl is the daughter of a, one of my favorite models, uh, and uh, she, we had an opportunity to set her up. This was actually done in my studio. We had a teepee mock-up for her, and we dressed her up, and she was very unhappy about all that. She didn't like the clothes, but eventually she settled down and started having fun with the dolls, and this is what I ended up doing. Uh, uh, the name of this is Council with the Little People. And again, it's a co pretty common thing for children to mimic what their parents do, and, and that's what's happening here. Is she's, She's in the middle of a council meeting. This little girl was somebody we met uh, on the Montana trip with Eric, and uh, uh, she was very comfortable sitting in this middle of all these little flowers, and uh, uh, the title of the piece is Spring Flowers. Uh, Monotopa. Uh, this is a very um, familiar guy. Uh, Catlin and Bodmer both painted him in the 1830s. I, I have already done one painting of him in, in, in an interior shot, very dramatic, coming out of the, 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 black, the dark background. And I thought it would be fun to uh, do, it, do another one where he's outside. This is more like what Catlin or Bodmer would, would do. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think oh. it came off very successful. We, uh, we worked around the, the, the right time of day, getting the right light and, and so forth. And, uh, I love that setting and all the, yeah. what about all the colors that come through? Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? And it all happens, you know, just really quickly through that magic hour, that, that time of day. You can see all your yeah. brush strokes and yeah. then you step back and... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this fella here was somebody that we, uh, we also met up at Crow Agency. And I was first thing that I was struck with is uh, uh, there was this um, historic fellow, uh, uh, Pretty Eagle. Strange name, easy to remember. Uh, it really goes against the, this masculine thing of this great chief. But the, he was a spit image of this fellow. Uh, so I, I, I call this Pretty Eagle. I mean, it's. Uh, as opposed to actually using a, an old image of, of Pretty Eagle, I, <laughs> I, I use my model, which I think is a pretty, pretty, good, uh, pretty good representation of, of who that man really was. Okay, we'll head over to the other side. Yeah. Here's okay. some of your... Uh, yeah, some of the old uh, magazine covers. And their bio. You can read that when you come to the show. If you're able to make it. Yeah, right? every, yeah everything that uh, you see here is on Legacy's website. They have a nice website that's up. Let's say the only painting that isn't on there is still at the studio. I'll, I'll, have, it, I'll have it finished uh, in, you know, you know, in a couple of days and bring it down. One more. Yeah, so one more. So if you want to see the last one, you got to come to the show. Yeah, one more. Yeah, one more. It's not <laughs> you want to do uh, Oh, yeah, let's do sculpture. Yeah, yeah well, let's not pass her up. Uh, Sister Moon, uh, medicine woman. I usually think of medicine women or medicine men as, as being old ca uh, characters, but the, the young women were medicine women as well. Uh, there's a, uh, a staff or a stick, depending on what you want to call it, that was used as a means to connect to the earth. And that's what she's holding. She's holding this, this little staff and it would have been, been used originally for digging. And uh, when it's uh, geared up the way this thing is with all these little cool little, little accoutrements or whatever you want to call them, she's got pieces of the universe on here. We've got the stars, the sun, the, the universe, um, and it's got this magical quality. I'm always attracted to this because it shows us how we're all kind of the same. This could be a European uh, fairy tale. And, mm -hmm. and that, I find that very attractive. Yeah. A lot of fun. She does look magical with the yeah, light yeah. hitting her. Yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about the other sculpture here first before we go to the paintings. Uh, Crazy Horse was, uh, was a very, um, probably out of all the historical characters, it, from what I could tell by most of my native friends that I talked to, uh, the most important, most spiritual, uh, never let himself uh, be photographed. He was very pure, 
Uh, we know by some of his descendants kind of what he might have looked like. We know his physical descriptions and stuff. But what's, partly what inspired this piece was uh, a friend of mine was talking about the historic probability that he had a, a headdress made from a kestrel. And I thought that would be a lot of fun. I, I, and I managed to find a mounted kestrel uh, that was mounted back in the 50s. It would be illegal to have one now. But uh, I sent it off to my buddy, and he, he made a headdress from it. And uh, we got my, I got a nice model, and we put together this, this sculpture. And I, I think it uh, turned, out, turned out pretty nice. Got a lot of nice little, little lots of nice texture and... Uh, the other thing is, is that a Crazy Horse was a was a young man, you know. He he died in his late twenties. Very nice. I love this sculpture. Yeah. Yeah. So let's 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 wander over here. There's Brad back there. Yeah. Yeah. Say hi to Brad. Hi, Brad. Wave hi, Brad. <laughs> yeah. 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 Brad's the reason we're here. Partly. <laughs> partly the reason we're here. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, by the way, yeah, Brad owns Legacy Gallery for anybody that doesn't understand who Brad is. <laughs> Please edit that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Raven's uh, gift. Uh, one of the his uh, one of the creation stories talks about the raven as being uh, someone who brought a lot of gifts to the native people. But the one that I found intriguing was is they say that he he brought light to the people. Mm. Uh, this pattern behind here on this exploit robe is a, is a sun pattern. And so the, since it, it's, it's very prominent in the painting, uh, the title Raven's Gift. This is called a gathering of friends. Uh, we have a young woman here who is sorting out her doll collection, basically. Um, the dolls are used for, uh, for teaching. Uh, for a lot of the early Native Americans. Uh, they're also, I've been told, um, reflect the prosperity of the tribe as well. You know, it's kind of interesting to think of dolls as being a status symbol, but uh, you know, that's all part of, the, part of the nature of it. There's all kinds of cool things about dolls. And, uh, I've got quite a collection of them myself. It's kind of funny, you know, to have a dog collection, but they're, they're you know, they're really, really, I find them really interesting. I like those dolls a lot better than those uh, yeah. ones from the horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these aren't nearly as scary. At least I, no, don't, I don't. At least I don't think they're scary. No, they're much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Weeping Heart. Uh, this is one of those uh, fun things to, that you can use uh, something that looks kind of sinister and then give it a give it a name that kind of goes against the, the the sinister feel. The the title comes from 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 the axe. This design here was a popular design by the traders. It was, could have been made in France or, or, or uh, England. Uh, Hudson Bay Company used these for currency, it, to, for, to pay for their furs and such. Hmm. I want people to see how, because sometimes in the photos, I think it's get, it gets lost how you can see all your brush strokes oh, yeah, up yeah. close yeah, yeah, yeah. and how loose it can be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you yeah, step back. Yeah, and it looks yeah, yeah. Our painterly, depending on how you look at it. Yeah, yeah no, it's true. I mean, being able to, to to understand that these it's not like made by a machine is kind of important, and and be able to see the process. Yeah, and that's one of the advantages to doing it like that, where you can actually scan it, and and it's kind of fun. It's as, it's as, it's as, it's the next best thing to actually being in front of the painting itself. Uh, several years back, I did a sculpture called 1876, uh, Gull, Sitting Bull, Crazy Horse. And uh, this particular show, it, it was very special, uh, you know, because of the timing. Uh, I did the same show four years ago. And the special thing about this show was is that I wanted to create that sculpture in, in a painting. I've had a lot of people ask me about that, and so I decided that this would be the way to do it. And... Uh, uh, we put together a, a, a TP, recreated a, a scene that was as close as anybody could get to that period of 1876. Uh, we have Gaul on the end. Uh, Gaul was photographed quite a bit, so I had a pretty good image, lots of nice image that I, I could composite for what he looked like uh, in, in his face. His body, uh, he was a big man. 
Uh, they, you know, he was well, you know, he was over 6'4", they say. And so uh, the composition had to be set up in a way to where he didn't overwhelm the scene. He's, he's next to a Crazy Horse, which, or Sitting Bull, which was also a fairly tall man. But I've got him up sort of on his haunches, and that gives, that gives his head height a little bit more. He's up above the rest of them just a little bit. He, and uh, then at the end is uh, Crazy Horse, and here is, there's that kestrel on his head. The other thing that's interesting, too, about this whole uh, 1876 and the Custer battle is, is that uh, repeating rifles was very important to, to, to the advantage that the Native Americans had. Uh, the cavalry had uh, single shots. Uh, Gaul was also, uh, these, these were really trained warriors. Uh, Gaul, there was a uh, mythical uh, uh, story. I call it mythical because no one knows it's true, but they say that his family was killed by the cavalry a, a year before. And to avenge his family, he, he went into battle with his ax. He probably didn't. It's just a great story, so I'm repeating it. <laughs> well, I personally think this painting is going to go down in history. No, thank you, Eric. That might be one of your most famous. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, said, yeah, uh, yes. And then, of course, if you guys don't know Eric, Eric is, is like my second wife. Okay. Wait, I thought I was like your son. <laughs> oh, you, okay, oh. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, let's call it son. My wife is the one that always helps me with all the little details and all the little, you know, critiquing and stuff. And Eric, uh, Eric is right in there with her. He, he, takes care of every, he takes care of all that fun stuff for me. Also a very talented guy. Who's going to start painting next year? That'll be fun to see what he comes <laughs> up with. Uh, Night Spirit. And just uh, uh, perfect timing. Eric named this painting, Night Spirit. This is <laughs> yeah. Eric's name. Yeah, and, and of course it fits it perfectly. Uh, someone asked uh, if this was Crazy Horse, and I, my only thing I could say was, is, uh, it's, it's so mysterious and so wonderful, I kind of hate to diminish the, the, the mystery a, li a little bit by actually giving it a name like that. But yeah, if, if it was anything, it probably is Crazy Horse. He's very, he really looks a heck of a lot like that sculpture I did. Yeah, you and, can't help but notice that. Yeah, can't help but notice that. Lots of mystery there. Here, I'll do a little pan from this. Yeah, yeah. Over to yeah. the sculpture. Yeah. All right, what's next? All right. Another one of my little girls, and you know, I always remind everybody that I've got the two daughters, I've got the granddaughters, I've, and I just recently, soon I had her, I have a great granddaughter. Sisters of the Greasy Grass. Uh, Greasy Grass was the the name of the of the area where the Custer Battle was. Uh, in uh, they say that it was the grass looks greasy, and it's uh, people that understand that area uh, know that name. Uh, it, it sounds interesting. But uh, so she's uh, she's enjoying her uh, the camaraderie with her little sister doll. Very cute. Very cute. Yeah. Um, this is a wardrobe I had made for my Monotopa. This is uh, mm -hmm. Monotopa was also known as Four Bears. And uh, the, these things here, this is all this is all part of the historic record. It's really interesting to see. How all the items, authentic items you have made, show yeah, yeah, up. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's fun to yeah. He he avenged his brother's death by uh, by killing this man who, when after he died, his this feather fell off of his headdress, and the red spot means that he killed him, and he put it up on his his lance to show everybody that he avenged his brother. And if people look back at your monotope painting, they'll see him holding this. Yes, and of course they can see this part here too. This is yep. a, you know, that's a, that's a, you can imagine what that is. Yeah, he goes, he's got his otter bag and his, there again, an effigy for a knife. There again, all symbols of, of war. These guys were warriors. It was all part of their culture. Uh, this is a painting that I really enjoyed doing. It, it, uh, it reminds me of something that might have been done in Europe. I'm always fascinated by the Native Americans and a lot of their views on things uh, are very romantic actually. Once you get past some of the misunderstandings and things that were hard to figure out from our culture, but they were very romantic and they put themselves in situations that uh, could right out of a Grimm's fairy tale. And that's how I felt about this here. It's got a magical background. Uh, 
and she sort of nestled in part of the part of that whole energy of, of what's going on in the back. Um, we've got a the title is a Daughter of the Forest People. I had read that the the ancestral crow going way back were, were actually called people of the forest. Another favorite. Yeah. Yeah, I hate to say, <laughs> I've been holding back on saying they're my favorite. Nobody's going to believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. But I really like this one. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, if we don't have a favorite, we're not going to leave it in the show. I hope. I think yeah. we got them all covered. Yeah. Did we cover all of them? Did what? Which ones did we miss here? Yeah, I think I we think did. I think we did. This is uh, yeah, what yeah. the oh, oh, yeah, yeah. And this is actually George Catlin's. Uh, it's a print that uh, uh, that we borrowed from the museum. It's not original. It's just a print, but it's. Uh, that's uh, he who jumps over everyone. That's where you got the idea that, well, from that, the historical that record. The historical record, yeah. And then here, yeah, yeah. Here's the piece going in the same direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the backside. Yep. Yep. Well, I think that's it, John. What yeah. do you think? Yeah, I, I think we covered it pretty good. And of course, uh, check out Legacy's uh, website. They have a pretty good document with all the all the photos, the good photos of, of everything, and. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, how are we doing here? I think we got it. I think we got it. All right, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, my show is the 14th. This Saturday. This Saturday at five o'clock. And uh, come before that, Eric and, I are, er, Eric and I are doing a presentation in the back of the room here. The, it's dark right now, but what we're gonna be talking about is the creative process. Starting and at 10 a.m. Saturday. 10, a, 10 a.m. Saturday, yeah. All yeah, right. so, so, hey, we did 22 minutes. Our so, goal was 20. Good. So we did, we did perfect. That was a perfect thing. All right. See you guys soon. See you. Thanks. All right. So thank you.